Time to save? Snake, you of course know the saying, one for all, all for one. What is this all of a sudden? Oh, I figured you'd need a lot of motivation, so I came prepared. It's from the Three Musketeers. The book, not the candy bar. Anyway, it means that if you go up against everyone by yourself, they'll gang up on you too, I think. Since you're on your own on that ship, you need to take this to heart and avoid confrontations. How was that? Just like the old days, huh? Almost reminds me of Mei Ling. But you sure you got it right? Of course. And I'll teach you a lot more of these. You can count on it. Great. Okay. There's a saying that goes, even a bird on high dies a glutton's death, as do the fish of the deeps. The lesson is, uh, don't be greedy. The fish that belonged to a family called the deeps died from overfeeding, and so did a bird that got high on something, probably fermented fruit. Okay, if you say so. I do, Snake. Don't take unnecessary risks just because you're greedy for more items. Remember the deep family's fish. <sighs> Another Chinese proverb. Those who look to the heavens prosper. Those who defy it are no more. Do you know this one? The meaning here is, hold on a sec, that you can only survive as long as you're a part of the natural order of things. You remember pre-ripped jeans? Manufacturers thought that just because people loved old, broken-in jeans, they would want to buy new jeans that looked old. So they purposefully... What do jeans have to do with nature and order? Denim should fray and rip on its own, naturally, right? Some designers tried to go against that, and no one bought them. The earnings report from that fiscal year is enough of a proof. Earnings? Hey, Snake, what's hardest won, most easily lost? It's time, get it? Amazing how relevant these Chinese proverbs still are. Once the moment's gone, it's gone. Except for daylight savings time, of course. That extra hour to do anything you like with every autumn, Gotta love it. Then again, you lose an hour every spring, so I guess the proverbs are right. Wow, they thought of everything. Did they even have daylight savings back then? Of course not. They knew how to save time. We're the ones that need to be tricked into it. Yeah, but you said... The moment never returns, Snake. Let's not waste it on idle questions. Okay. The Chinese have a saying. Those who are lost never question a path and a drowning man doubts not the shallows. And it means, means that you need to make use of other people's help, otherwise you could be in trouble. If you're lost, you don't even know whether a road you come across is a right one. And uh, what's the difference between shallow and deep if you've already drowned, right? Anyway, the point is that help is always a good thing to accept. So make good use of the codec. Look, this stuff seems nothing like what Mei Ling used to talk about. Hey, she couldn't do better herself. Ugh. Acquaintances agree, friends argue. And that's a straightforward one. The better friends you are, the more openly you can disagree with each other. So feel free to present a counterpoint if you don't agree with what I'm saying. Argue away. Sure, all right. Not a promising start. Okay, forget what I said. Just go along with my advice. Do you know the saying, one forgets the hurt once the wound is healed? And that, of course, means... Um, uh, where'd I put that piece of paper? Did you say something? No, nothing. Uh, so, uh, forgetting the pain when the wound's healed means, um, th th that you have to get better fast. Yeah, that's it. So stock up on those rations and bandages. Is that really all it means? Hey, I'm the expert here. Snake, have you heard this one? Evil is human nature, and his entire being, falseness. The concept of so-called original sin. The idea that you're born bad, so you can't help doing bad things. Hold on. I thought the idea of original sin was that you had to work even harder at being good because you were born evil. Uh, oh, well, yeah, that too. Very good, Snake. <sighs> you know the story about Achilles and Paris? The moral here is, uh, well, something about his heel. Anyway, even the great and virtually immortal hero Achilles was finally done in by Paris. Talk about a dangerous city. So don't get complacent. The mission can turn around and get you. Wasn't Paris a person? What? Paris. I thought he was a... Snake, there's a time and a place for conspiracy theories. Please, I'm trying to concentrate here. Huh? Ah, uh, sorry? Do you know the saying, 
Those who walk a hundred leagues think not that their journey is half ended until the 90th league? That means... What does it mean? Okay, it means that if you're planning to walk that far, you better damn well know how to do simple arithmetic. Study, stay in school. This seems to be getting more and more random. Correction, it's becoming more deep, trust me. The Chinese have a proverb that goes, scholars hold in esteem knowledge, not acts. See, they just sit around thinking instead of actually doing something, which doesn't make them too useful. Action is what matters, I think. Look, what I heard from Mei Ling was that... Snake, have you noticed that you bring her up a lot? Huh? Th that isn't the... Here we go again. What am I gonna do with you? Like I was saying... You and your hyperactive libido. It's a good thing one of us can keep all the details straight. <sighs> this is my favorite Chinese saying. Better to be first among roosters than last among bulls. Of course, the meaning's clear. If you have to choose between being a chicken or a cow, pick the chicken. Cows are always being messed with by aliens. Cattle mutilations are up, you know. Why go looking for trouble, right? If an enemy spots you, you'll be in more trouble than a cow on a UFO. You stay out of their sight. Why would aliens be in an old Chinese proverb? Everyone knows they've been visiting us for thousands of years. News to me. Snake, do you know the Chinese proverb, care avoids air? Air is thought to be a kung word, meaning what? There's some linguists who think that this accounts for an almost universal utterance of the syllable er when people are at a loss for words. A kind of vestigial... Hey! Ah! What a crock! What did you do with that little cheat sheet I made you? Er. Oh, there it is. <gasps> hey! Er. that's really, uh... How could you do that? You know how busy I am and you... It's not what you think. Oh? So what am I thinking? What's going on over there? Oh, hi, Snake. Do you know the Otacon's been... Er, uh, Mei Ling, we're in the middle of a mission and everything, so can we, you know... Hmm. Fine. Sure. And Snake, the real meaning of care avoids air is that if you're cautious, you can avoid making serious mistakes. Even if you've gotten used to the mission, watch what you do. Good luck. Yeah, Snake. Good luck. You, I'm not done with. <laughs> Let's discuss this, shall we? Uh, what happened to Mei Ling? He... She got mad and went offline. What did you do? Nothing. Now, don't we need to get back to the mission? So much to do, so little time. <sighs> Jack, is that you? Jack, do you remember what day tomorrow is? That again. I'm sorry, but I still don't have a clue. That's okay. What is it, Rose? Talk to me. I'd rather you figure it out. It's important. How important? Important enough? And we'll talk about it tomorrow. Why not now? Tomorrow seems more appropriate. I need all the help I can get so that I won't chicken out anyway. Is that the reason you decided to be part of this mission? <sighs> okay. I'm gonna finish this thing by tomorrow no matter what. You know I'll do everything I can to help you. Rose, there's something I need you to do as an analyst. What is it? It has to do with Solid Snake. The leader of this takeover incident is claiming that he's Snake himself. The legendary mercenary? Hmm. I need as much data on him as possible. Everything they have on him after the Shadow Moses incident. He's dead now, isn't he? Yes. Should be a burial record somewhere, too. You should be able to request top-level security clearance from the Colonel. That should get us into the most classified material. I'm on it. I'll contact you as soon as I find out something. Rose? No comment? About? I've killed someone. Jack, it's a battlefield. My opponents are living, breathing human beings. This isn't like the VR training. They have bodies. They have had lives. I took all that away from them. But you've got no choice if you want to survive. And yet, maybe because of the VR training, I can't help but try and block out that reality. It's the only way I can manage to fight. Jack. What? I don't care what it takes, just as long as you come back alive. Do whatever it takes, please. Just come back in one piece. Okay. Rose, are you okay? Yes, thank you. It really scared me at first, but I think I've gotten used to it. I'll be behind you all the way, so don't worry. I guess women really are strong. <laughs> not quite. It's not women that are strong. It's me. Just as long as I can count on you. Actually, that's not true. It still scares me to death. But I'll be strong. 
I'll try. For you. Good luck. Jack, when you get home, let's have a homecoming party. Just the two of us. Yeah, that's a good idea. Hmm. I'll make dinner. Uh, well, well, what's wrong? Well, that sounds good, but how about we eat out at that one restaurant instead? You know, the place that we went to recently with the amazing lobster? I really like that place. Well, yeah, I, I guess that's okay, too. Whew. Huh? Uh, nothing. I, I just love lobster. <laughs> yeah, can't wait. Woohoo! <laughs> Well, then I'll make a reservation. Promise me you'll come back safely. Don't worry. So, Jack, what do you want? What do I want? Well, I'd like to save, if that's okay. Then go ahead. This is a joke, right? Rose. What now? What do you mean, what now? Save my data, please. <sighs> Fine. Don't you have something you want to say before that? Like what? Ugh. <sighs> All right, I get it. I'm sorry. There. You satisfied? Close enough. You selfish. What was that? Nothing. Just talking to myself. Jack, it must be so nerve-wracking to defuse a bomb. Yeah, I'd say so. Okay, that was a stupid thing to say. Sorry. That's all right. It's just that I've never been trained in this stuff. You okay? Are you feeling well? I almost threw up a few times. Oh, Jack. But I'm okay. It's not like I'm in this alone. Oh, yeah, that's true. What do you think about when you're diffusing those things? I don't think so much as remember. And I know that I need to resist that and keep my mind blank. I can't let myself be overwhelmed by the fear. So, am I a part of what you try not to remember? <laughs> I was just kidding. But I guess this isn't a good time for that. No, it is. And I do think about you. I'm trying to remember what's so special about April 30th. Any success? No, not yet. You need to stay alive so you can. Okay, that's a deal. I looked into Mr. Peter Stillman's file. Full name is Peter Stillman, known as Peg Leg Peter. He is a legendary bomb disposal technician. He is also a longtime instructor at the Naval School Explosive Ordnance Disposal and a consultant for the NYPD Bomb Squad. But five years ago, he lost his leg in an accident. And since then, he hung up his gloves to focus on being a lecturer. He was called back into service because, as he said, he is the only explosive specialist who can stop Fat Man. Although no longer an active consultant, he is still without a doubt the number one guy when it comes to disarming explosives. He should be very helpful to you. You're looking pretty good. Yeah? I wonder how Lieutenant J.G. Pliskin is doing. Well, he's doing pretty good, too. Oh, really? I'm glad. Why are you so worried? Huh? About Pliskin. Well, I mean, he's defusing the bombs along with you. If he screws something up, you'll be... I guess so. He'll be all right, I'm sure. Don't worry about it. Okay. Hang in there. Hey, Jack, I bet bomb disposal's a lot like starting a relationship. Huh? What are you talking about? Carefully dismantling emotional defenses, being on your toes constantly, you know. I guess. Neither of them are my strong point. It's true that you're not the most patient man in the world. <laughs> it's not that. I like to leave things as they are. Are you afraid of what might be hidden inside? Not afraid, just unwilling to deal with complications. Like me? You're... Hey, Jack? Yeah? Do you know why I took this job? Hmm. I wanted to see what you were really like. But we've been together a while. You know me already. No, you never let me in past a certain point, and I need to know what's there. <sighs> oh, are you trying to take me apart now? Hey, it's not important. Good luck, Jack. What? I, I can't believe this. What are you wearing? Well, it's a disguise. A disguise? <laughs> what kind of disguise? Well, I was hoping I could use it kind of like camouflage. You know fool the enemy into thinking I was a box. You'd have to be an absolute idiot to be fooled by that. Yeah, maybe. But there are more idiots in this world than you think. You mean like you? What? <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, good luck. You'll probably need it with that stupid box on your head. By the way, Jack, what's that you're holding? Uh, well... Look, if it's bothering you that much, you should just say so. Yeah? And if I do? <laughs> Just be patient, dear. I can't believe it. 
Stillman's prosthetic leg was all a big lie. Don't be too hard on him, Rose. But he's got no right to go around pretending he's got a prosthetic leg. That's an insult to people who really can't walk. Everyone's got their own reasons. Sometimes, you've got no choice but to lie. You're right. I, I guess it is necessary sometimes. Rose? It's nothing. Well, see ya. Jack. Uh, what? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. All right, all right. The bomb was where you guessed it would be. You were right, and you saved my butt. As long as you realize that. I was pretty surprised, though. I never expected to find it where I did. <laughs> you must think I'm pretty clueless, huh? Of course not. And I have a pretty healthy respect for the woman's intuition thing now. That is such a sexist thing to say, you know that? Come on, don't be mad. I apologized already. <laughs> don't sweat it. I'm just messing with you. I want you to recognize that I can help you through this thing, and that I care about you. Rose? Hang in there, okay? Jack, I know you're probably doing fine, but don't get discouraged. Remember, Lieutenant J.G. Pliskin is with you, too. You'll be all right. <sighs> What's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> don't give me that. Every time you say nothing, it's always something. What's wrong? It's just that, you know, you seem to think pretty highly of him. Well... Yeah. Pliskin's the kind of guy you can really depend on, isn't he? What? What? <laughs> yeah, Pliskin is one heck of a man, isn't he? He's so cool, so confident. Yeah. Yeah. But he's nowhere near as cool as you. You'll always be my number one. Always. But that's not what I meant. <laughs> you know, you're kind of cute sometimes. Bye, Jack. Jack, how's the mission going? Fine. Fine? Is that it? Look, I really don't feel like talking about the mission. At least with you. I want to talk about something else. Okay then. Let's talk about you. Me? Yeah, your least favorite subject. That's not... Oh yeah? Then go ahead and say something. Like what? Anything. Tell me something about yourself. I can't think of anything interesting to say. Why do you want to talk about me so badly? Because I'm curious. But why? Is it really that strange to want to know more about someone you love? No, it's not strange, but... You know, sometimes I... Oh, look, now we're talking about me, not you. <sighs> Why won't you tell me anything? About what you were like as a child? What kind of things you liked to do? What kind of people your parents were? I've never heard you talk about any of that. Why? I... Don't you think it's just a little bit unusual? That I don't know anything about my own boyfriend's past? Rose, when I get back, I'll tell you everything. Is that a promise? Yes, it's a promise. <sighs> Rose. So, have you decided to talk yet? Nope. That's too bad. Why are you so interested in me all of a sudden? Because I'm curious. More so than before, does it really bother you that much? There must be some things you don't want to say. Like what? You know... Those things you don't want to say. Let's see. Things you don't want to say. Like that you've been married before, that you're 80 years old, that you used to be a woman. Rose. What exactly is it you won't tell me? Do you think I'd hate you if I knew? Do you really have that little faith in me? No, it's nothing like that. Then what is it? It's... <sighs> it really bothers me. The fact that there's a side of you I don't know. Sometimes, I just can't help myself. You've got me right now. Isn't that enough? No, it's not. I'm sorry. I know I'm being greedy, but it's just not enough. <sighs> Jack, have you remembered what day it is tomorrow? Uh, no. I see. Uh, you said you had something you wanted to talk to me about? What was it? We'll talk about it tomorrow. <sighs> Why does it have to be tomorrow? So I can build up enough courage first. And so you won't run away. I would never do something like that. Liar. Every time I want to talk about something, you suddenly remember that you have some work you have to do, or you get a stomach ache. Hey, that's not... You know it's true. What are you so afraid of? I'm not afraid of anything, and I won't try to run away. Is that so? Well then, we'll talk tomorrow. Yeah. So you have to come back, okay? I know. You know, Jack, there's something that bugs me sometimes. What? Why are you going out with me? Huh? Is it because I'm beautiful? Why are you asking me this all of a sudden? 
And where do you get off calling yourself beautiful? Well, it's the truth, plain and simple. I'm too smart not to realize it and not sarcastic enough to be modest about it. <laughs> Is that so? Well then, your schedule must be booked solid with dates. You bet. I've even hired a private secretary to deal with all of them. But she cancels all of my appointments except for yours. Ooh. <sighs> Sometimes it really does bother me. Sometimes I think all you want is a pretty face to accompany you to parties. What are you- Just to make everyone jealous when they see you with me. You're being ridiculous. Oh really? But you never talk about yourself. I never know whether it's really me you want by your side, whether you'd ditch me if you found someone prettier. You know that's not true. Really? Then would you still go out with me even if I weren't beautiful? Uh, of course. Do you like me for me? Or is it my reputation? Do you really think anyone would say your reputation? <sighs> I'm just joking. Of course I like you for you. Honest truth. Really? Thank you. Jack, tell me, am I really helping you out? Yeah, you're a huge help. I'm lucky to have you as an analyst. Hmm. But didn't you tell me just a little while ago that I should change my job or quit or something? Yeah, and you were pretty pissed off. Why did you say those things? Well, you have to work overtime and stuff. It sounded pretty tough. But you didn't mean it, did you? I was wrong about a lot of things then. I just thought that if we had more time to spend together that... You were thinking of your own danger. Uh, well... Don't you think it's selfish to expect everyone to be at your beck and call? I'm not your personal possession, you know. That's not how I think of you. Is that so? Yeah. Listen, I like you. And I like the me that likes you. But I do not like being summed up as Jack's girlfriend. The very thought of it makes me shiver. There's a lot more to me than just being your girlfriend. The fact that I'm doing the job I want to do is part of that, understand? Yeah, of course, I... I want to be recognized, first of all, for who I really am. Especially by you. I don't want you, of all people, thinking that I'm just your girlfriend. That's not what I think at all. Can you really say that? Absolutely. Really? I'm glad. Now that I think about it, it feels kind of fresh. What does? Before, I could always rest assured that I'd see you again. Now it's different. Now it feels like every word we say to each other counts. <laughs> That's great. We could make this into a book and sell it. Want to improve communication in your relationship? Send your man off to fight a war. Jack. Rose, you know my life's at stake here. So is mine. Rose? I'm sorry, but I'm really worried too. I can't help but feel like I'm fighting this battle along with you. Yeah, I know. Thanks. You know, that really looks good on you. You think so? Yeah. Everything looks good on you, Jack. Everything but that stupid box. What? Nothing. It'd be nice if you were this stylish all the time. It's too much of a hassle. Well, at least you could care a little bit more about how you look. You care enough for both of us. Yeah, that's true. But I want to be beautiful. You want people to compliment you? Yeah, especially you. Me? Yes. Is that strange? Not at all. Really? Well then, next time be sure to compliment me. By the way, Jack, are you smoking? Yep. I thought you quit smoking. Why did you start again? There are lots of reasons. Look, I'm only thinking about your health, okay? Remember the last time you quit, how hard it was? Yeah, it was pretty tough. Wasn't it? So you should just- I've got it, Rose. I've thought of a way to avoid all that pain and suffering. What are you gonna do? Keep smoking. Jack! Just kidding. I know it's bad for me. I'll quit as soon as I get back. Oh. <sighs> <sighs> Jack, I found data on the briefcase used to unlock the nuclear launch codes. It appears to be a fail-safe system using the President's DNA base order and input of his physiological data as its key. The lock is said to be impenetrable. In other words, the President himself is the only one who can enter the password. Right. On top of that, as Ames mentioned before, the password becomes invalid when the President's brainwaves, heartbeat, etc. are not within normal limits. So the President entered that code by his own free will after all. But why would the U.S. President lend a hand to terrorists? How should I... I don't have information like that. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't. 
Also, it seems that the need to reconfirm the code after a set amount of time is true. Meaning that the President is safe, right? How about the story of the Black Case also serving as the launch key to a new model of Metal Gear? That wasn't in the records. Hmm. Stories of a new Metal Gear model aside, it is certain that they have finished inputting the code and are trying to launch the nuclear warhead. Meet with the President and ascertain the truth. Hurry! You must meet with him while he's still alive. Jack. What is it? I've always been alone. Huh? I'm so lonely. Lonely? Rose, we've always... Not always. What do you mean? You've never slept beside me. What are you talking about? I... After we've been together in my room, you stay awake all night, or you head for the door. Is this really the time to bring this up? Why, Jack? Why? Listen, Rose, I'm right in the middle of a mission, and I... Why? Why can't you relax when you're with me? Look, the mission, I... Why don't you open up to me? Rose, I, I just can't. All I ever wanted was to share your dreams, to spend a meaningful evening with you. I just wanted to find you by my side when I woke up. Is that asking too much? It's the night. I'm scared of the night. It's got nothing to do with you. Scared of the night? What's that supposed to mean? I can't relax when I'm with someone. Jack, you wouldn't even let me in your room. I need privacy. I just can't be bothered. Bothered? Wrong word. What I wanted to say was that there are certain things that I have to keep to myself. Do you remember that time I forced my way into your room? We'd known each other for almost a year, and you blew up. It was the first time you ever raised your hand against me. I was so worried about you. Look, I'm sorry. It wasn't your violent nature that scared me. It was your room, your heart. Stop it. There wasn't anything in your room. Only a bed and a small desk. It looked like a prison cell. <sighs> Rose? No television set. No family pictures. Not even a poster. Rose, I only used that room for sleeping. A lifeless room. Almost like your empty heart. That's why I tried to keep you out. I thought I was beginning to understand you. Until I saw that room. Would you have been happier if I had a picture of you hanging on the wall? That's not what I was trying to say. Enough, Rose. We'll talk about this later. After the mission. Right. After the mission. I understand. Um, Jack, about trying to break into your room. Rose, just forget about it. No, listen to me. I said I did it because I was worried about you, but it wasn't just that. What? I was suspicious. I thought there might be someone else. Someone else? Another woman. Rose. I really thought so, because sometimes you're so horribly cold. You know I wouldn't. I'm serious. Sometimes I feel like you're pushing me away. So I... Did you get in? Yeah. Are you satisfied now? There wasn't anyone there, was there? No. No, there was no one there. There was absolutely no one in your room. Not another woman. Not me. Not even you. Rose. I'm sorry. I just wanted to apologize, that's all. Talk to you later. Well, Jack, it sounds like you and Miss Emma are getting along just fine. Rose? I've been monitoring your every move in conversation. I can't say it's been fun. Give me a break. I I'm only trying to keep her spirits up. Is that right? Absolutely. My mission is to get her to the computer room. That's all? Yeah. You're lying. You're attracted to her, aren't you? I'll admit she's cute. Cuter than me? Rose, you're beautiful. You know how I feel about you. Have you remembered yet? You mean April 30th? Yes. It's your birthday, isn't it? Wrong. You're not even warm. What is it then? Forget it. It's nothing. Maybe I'm just a little, a little jealous. Rose. You'd better get moving. Good luck. Jack, how far do you think the Patriots' digital control extends? I don't really know, but it probably influences a lot of what goes on in our everyday lives. Even mundane things like which movies and songs become a hit and what kind of clothes we wear? I think taste would be the easiest thing to manipulate. I mean, think about the kinds of film and bands everyone wants to go to see. 
It's whatever's at the top of the charts. And if the charts are made up... Exactly. But you can't really control individual taste. It's too closely tied to personality. I don't know about that. Trends have always been about following the leader. Not necessarily. The age of direct personal interaction is over. So is the idea of word-of-mouth communication. Rose, you have any friends you've met online? Huh? Yeah, I do. How many? Well, if you count only the ones I talk to a lot, I'd say about 20. How many of those have you actually met? <laughs> One or two tops. Uh-huh. That's how it is for everyone, I guess. And even if your online buddies had fake identities and were circulating false information, you'd have no way of knowing. Fake identities? Right. And there'd be no way for you to know for sure. Well, what about people who do meet face-to-face -face, then? Like us. Us? Have you ever really shown me the real you? I wouldn't even know the real me myself. But you're being honest with yourself now. Well, that's how I see it. Well, how am I being honest? I've never seen you show so much feeling. Fear, anger, even a kind of giddiness. It may seem a strange thing to say, but you're living out loud for the first time that I've seen. I'm just trying to get the job done. This is war, you know. I do know that. I'm just saying you're different from your usual restrained self. What about you, then? I always want to be open with you as much as I can. Rose, can you hear me? I'm right here. Actually, that's okay. Forget it. Jack, what is it? You wouldn't understand. Try me, Jack. Please. I can't. Not to you. Please, tell me. I can help you. No. There's no way you'd understand. You can tell Snake, but you won't tell me? He's different. Why? I'm in this war, too. With you. No. The war is out here, not on a live feed to some control room. You want me to pick up a gun and fight? Is that it? Lord, no. You're the one person that I'd do anything to keep out of this place. Then what is it? I'm a... a killer. But... I see men hit, I see them die in agony, and I don't feel a thing for them. Don't think things like that, Jack. I'm a born and bred killer. Nothing like Snake. He fights for something he believes in. So do you. You're doing your duty. No, I'm not. Somewhere deep inside, I'm enjoying this. This game. Jack, I've been thinking for a long time. You've got a no trespassing sign pasted on your heart. What? No entry beyond this point. You've got it written all over your heart. That's ridiculous. Don't try to deny it. You know I'm right. Stop lying to me. <sighs> Why do you do this? Don't you trust me? I don't know. I like you. I really do. It's... It's not that I'm rejecting you. It's just that... All right. I understand. Forget about it. I'm sorry. But someday, do you think you might let me in to the other side of that sign? Yeah. Someday. Okay. Someday. Promise me? Yeah. I promise. Jack, it must be hard for you. Yeah. When I watch people die like this... No, I mean, it must be hard for you in general. What? You always seem like you're trying to deny something within yourself, but can't. Oh. And I have no idea what's making you suffer so much. That's hard for me. If only you'd talk to me about it. There are some things I want you to understand without me having to explain. You can't possibly expect me to... Rose? <sighs> I guess you're right. Maybe if I were a better match for you, I could understand without being told. But I guess I'm not. I guess I'm just too different. Rose, that's... N not true? Yeah. You're perfect for me. The ideal woman, so to speak. Ideal? Yeah. If... Huh? If... If I was... What are you trying to say? Nothing. Never mind. Sorry, I was about to say something stupid. Get back to the mission. Jack? I was serious when I said I wanted you to propose to me. Rose? I was really worried. There are times when it seems like you're not really looking at me and that if I looked away for a moment, you'll disappear. I wanted to make sure you couldn't get away. I thought that if we lived together, maybe things would change. That maybe we could change things ourselves. <sighs> but that wasn't the problem. There was something deeper. I'm sorry. 
I guess it's impossible for me. What are you saying? I'm sorry, Jack. I love you. I really do. Please believe me. Whatever happens. Rose? Bye, Jack. Rose, the Colonel is acting strange. Oh? I haven't heard from him in a while. What do you mean? Isn't he there? No, I'm by myself. You're telling me you've never met the guy either? No, and they blindfolded me when they brought me here. I've never seen his face. Is everything okay? Yeah, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. Jack, are you okay? How's your murdering going? Be strong. Whatever happens, don't forget that my life's at stake too. Try to do something for me for a change. What? You want to save? Honestly, you only rely on people when it's convenient for you. Okay, get back to your murdering. You're doing this to save me, right? Don't deny it. I've done so much for you, haven't I? See ya. Got a minute, Jack? Rose? I found some information on where Solid Snake is interred. Great. Shoot. I've located the gravesite. And the body? Exhumed for DNA testing. Well, do you have the results? The right arm was missing, but there was no doubt that it was him. That body belongs to Solid Snake. Hmm. So the head of the terrorist group must be... An imposter. Right. You sound disappointed. I guess. I guess I was kind of hoping to meet the legend in the flesh. I get you. But it looks like he's not behind this incident. Raiden, the president needs you, I think. Disguise yourself as enemy personnel and infiltrate the core section. Your priority is to contact Agent Ames. Jack, do you remember the day we met? I'm kind of busy right now, Rose. <laughs> You're right. Sorry. I do remember. It was right after I transferred to New York. There are all these tourists around you in front of the Federal Hall. A group of middle-aged Japanese ladies came up and asked me which building it was that King Kong was climbing in the movie. I said it was probably the Chrysler building. And then you showed up and started mouthing off. You were like, no, it's the Empire State. I said the Chrysler building was in Godzilla. <laughs> we started arguing and I forgot all about the tourists. I was insisting that I was right and you were doing the same. The next thing we knew, the Japanese women had gone away, and we ended up going to the Skyscraper Museum to see who had the better recall. We argued all the way to Battery Park. And for nothing. Since the museum was closed, we went our separate ways from the museum. And then I found you again by coincidence out in the base corridor. An amazing coincidence that we were actually working at the same place. That night we went up to the top of the Empire State, it was so beautiful. I could look down on the Chrysler building from 120 stories above ground. I felt overwhelmed. I didn't care anymore who was right. And that was our first date. We watched King Kong in your apartment a bunch of times that night. Didn't sleep till morning. Hmm. If it weren't for that coincidence, we wouldn't be together. I know. I'm sorry, Jack. I'm taking up your time again. What? Take care.